used to live in a townhouse by myself with my dog and two cats near a train station. There was often commuters who parked outside my place and passed by through the day and night. Occasionally I had cigarettes or stuff stolen from my front porch. I even had my next door neighbor's ex-boyfriend come to my door telling me he had a hitman after him and he had a gun. But none of this scared me like the night I was watched. My dog lives indoors and I would take him out for a walk before bed. My backyard light was broken and was too high up to change the light bulb so I always took him out to the front. That night, it was around 11pm and I took him out to the front. It was a hot summer night and I was standing on the footpath when I suddenly saw movement across the road from me. Out of nowhere, a man had appeared and was walking diagonally across the street from me. I thought it was odd because I hadn't seen him come from the other direction. I continued to think about it. Where he came from was from the outside of a house that was being renovated. I knew the owners weren't living there and I thought maybe he was going to try to steal stuff. So I kept looking down the road to where he had gone. He had turned the corner down the next street. I kept watching and then suddenly I see his head pop around the corner to see if I'm still outside. This gives me the absolute creeps so I grab my dog and we go inside. I turn off all of my lights and go upstairs to my bedroom which is in front of the townhouse and faces the street. I thought I would keep watch of my neighbor's house and call the police if he came back. I peer through my blinds which cover sliding doors coming off a small balcony and like clockwork, I see a dark figure walk down from the corner and down my street. He's moving towards the house across the road and then I suddenly lose sight of him. A tree in front of my townhouse obscures my view for a moment and then there he is, but he's not just there, he has stopped at the top of my driveway. He was just standing there like fucking Jason Voorhees. I kid you not, his arms were out by his sides and his legs apart in an unnatural stance. It was like he was preparing for something, like he wanted to kill me. My heart is racing so hard I can barely hear. So I'm standing there slack jawed looking at this would be assailant when one of my cats comes to see what's happening. My cat slides his body between the blinds and the window further opening it and I see this person. This man is looking up towards me. I'm thinking surely he sees me. If he does, this does not stop him. He starts walking down my driveway, completely fixated. I then lose sight of him under the balcony and awning. By this time, my eyes are watering in fear and tears are streaming down my face. I don't know what to do, so I go and sit on my bed, pick up my mobile phone and dial my dad who lives in a suburb away. He answers and I whisper to him what's happening and he said he'll be there as soon as he can. I lie down in my bed and lie as still as I can, tears rolling down my cheeks. This feeling was pure fear. I did not know what this man was doing downstairs and if he could get in. What if I hadn't locked the doors? And then it dawned on me, why am I lying here in the dark crying? Turn on a light. And so I did. What seemed like a lifetime but was probably just a couple of minutes, my dad finally arrived. He had an umbrella with him. I live in Australia, so no guns, but he could have at least brought a knife. I stayed on the phone with my dad while he searched outside for the man. The man was gone. Maybe me turning on the lights scared him off. I then called the police, who said I should have called sooner. Of course I should have. I don't know why I didn't. They came out with a sniffer dog, but they didn't find anything. I don't know what he wanted, but for a good year after that, I was so scared living there. This story took place when I was 18. I'm small, 
five foot one, 100 pounds, and long brown hair. I think I used to believe I was invincible, a little dog syndrome, but that has now changed. It was a very hot summer day, and as usual, we decide to float down the river and have some drinks and laughs. This happened in Alberta on a big river, so you always bump into many other people floating or kayaking on nice hot days. I was with my boyfriend and a group of about 12 people. We connect all of our different tubes together with string and play music off of our phones and just enjoy the ride. The float can be four to eight hours, depending on the level of water and the flow of the river. We probably floated for about three to four hours when a few people came really drunk and some started drama. We had enough and decided we would just hop off and swim to the nearest side of the road and walk back. We got to the road, had no phone, no clothes, no shoes, and it was hot as hell. We started walking and the road was so hot I felt like my feet were cooking. After about 10 minutes of moaning, my boyfriend agreed we would try to hitchhike a ride to town or at least a little closer. He was from the area and figured we might catch someone he knows. Not too many cars were out and finally a truck pulled over. We walked up to it and it was two men probably in their early 30s. They looked fairly normal, maybe a little dirty like they partied hard all weekend. The first thing that stuck out to me was that they barely spoke to us and obviously stared at me like extremely creep level. We didn't really worry though and just wanted to get back to civilization and relax. The driver got out and opened his door so the back door would open and we got in and he took off. We tried to make small talk, especially my boyfriend, but these guys acted like zombies. There were empty beer cans all over the floor and I was starting to get freaked out. The driver kept glancing in the mirror at me and the guy in the passenger seat was leaning sideways to stare and sometimes answer back when we talked. I was squeezing my boyfriend's hand in fear and kept telling him with my eyes that we need to get out of here. I don't know if these guys knew they were scaring us or if they just got off on it, but maybe eight minutes passed and my boyfriend told them that we would like them to stop here. The two men looked at each other and the one shook his head no and then kept driving. We were mortified. My boyfriend was getting really scared and he told the guy to pull the fuck over a few times. About a minute later, the guy suddenly turned into a back road that went up a slight incline and curved. I literally thought we were going to die. I've never been so terrified in my life. He stopped the truck and looked in the mirror again at me for probably a good 10 seconds. My boyfriend hit the back of his chair super hard and yelled to let us out. The driver opened his door and then opened our door and we got out so damn fast and ran to the edge of the road. He just stood there and stared at us looking at his friend and then got back in and they drove off. I started crying immediately and my boyfriend comforted me and calmed me down. Then we started to walk down the road. Moral of the story, don't hitchhike. Keep a phone on you always and just make smart choices. So I have quite a creepy story for all of you. It's been roughly a month since the first incident and it's been a doozy. I live in a small, shitty town in a big beautiful state called New York. I reside in a two-story apartment with a front and back door. One Saturday night, I had a craving for a midnight snack, so I strutted down the stairs in my Saturday night apparel and into my kitchen. I was barely paying any attention to my surroundings until I noticed a face peering through my kitchen window. I went cold. The only way in was going around my house into my backyard. 
so this dude must have taken quite a few wrong turns. The man was just peering straight through me. His eyes did not move, but he just stared. I held eye contact for about 12 seconds until I could finally stammer something out. Hey, you need something? Silence, and he just continued to stare. Buddy, do you need help? Still silence. That's when I immediately booked it upstairs to find some sort of weapon just in case he makes some rash decisions. By the time I make it down the stairs, armed with a baseball bat the size of my forearm, he had vanished. I look out the side window into the driveway that leads to the backyard, and there he is, stumbling like a drunk through the driveway. He seemed to be holding something. It was a knife, and I'm talking a big pocket knife. I'm about two feet away from this psycho, separated by a small window. I promptly turned white and closed the blinds. This guy didn't even turn to look at me, he just kept walking. Oh, but that's not the end of the story, not by a long shot. The next night around 8.30, the doorbell rang. Shaken up from last night, I peeked through the curtains to see who was there. As I peered out, I quickly realized I was peering right into the eyes of the lovely man who had visited me the night before. We were both one inch away from the glass, and it got real intimate. After slamming the blinds closed, I debated calling the police. After a few seconds, however, he just laughed. After that, I would receive the same strange visitor at random hours of the night, and from then on, would call the police each time he decided to show. It's been a while since the last incident, but I'm not very optimistic. So weirdo with a knife probably staring through my window as I type this? Let's not meet. This past Monday, my coworkers and I returned to our hotel from a day of work out in the field. Rebecca and I walked into our rooms, and as we stood outside of our rooms, I opened mine and I saw someone in the bathroom. I said, Hello? Nobody answered. My first instinct was that it was a cleaning lady in there for some reason, and then I saw my bag with my clothes in her hands. I said to my coworker, There's a woman in my room. Then I asked the woman, what are you doing with my stuff? It gets a little fuzzy here because I can't remember everything I said and what she said, but she kept mumbling about how her key still worked and that's how she got in. I was in shock and she was obviously very flustered having been caught mid-robbery. She dropped my bags and fumbled around with her purse and a white plastic bag. By this time, my coworker was behind me watching all the insanity unfold. This woman was scrambling and walking towards the door and I said, What's in the bag? Thinking that it's probably my stuff. And so she said, No, no, it's just my things. It's just my things. I'll show you. And so she did. I looked in the bag and I didn't see anything of mine. And so since I'm obviously in shock at this time, I let her leave. I went into my room, and it's been ransacked. I did a quick look around to see if anything had been taken. All of my electronics were still there. Then I went into the bathroom, and I saw my underwear, my bikini, and my clothes shoved into my own bags randomly. Even my passport was shoved in there. Then I looked on the counter, and I saw that she got into my medication. I'm not sure what was going through my head at that moment other than I wanted it back, so I ran out the door to go find her. I ran to the laundry room downstairs and out to the side of the hotel, but I didn't see her. I realized I was never going to find her, so my coworker and I went down to the lobby to tell them what had happened, and then we called the police. 
We went back up to my room to wait, and I noticed that there was a metal bat on my bed, as well as a flashlight. She must have left it behind in her hurry. She also left behind a necklace that must have fallen out of her bag when she was scrambling with mine. I was mostly freaking out at this point because I thought she had gotten away with my medication that I need. The police got there and they took our statements and looked around the room as well. The one thing that I noticed, there was bits of drywall in the sink and I pointed that out to the cops, but none of us really knew where it came from. We started to look at the door and the windows to see if she had pried her way in somehow, but there was nothing. So we kind of just went with the idea that she had a spare key or something. Even though the hotel front desk was adamant, there was no way that could be. The officer that came then brought up two more officers as backup because they thought the woman might still be in the vicinity. But after our statements were taken, there was nothing else they could really do. So they left. I sat down to finally make some calls to tell people. And as I'm on the phone, I'm thinking about the drywall in the sink, and it still doesn't make sense to me. So I'm on the phone and looking at the drywall and the mirror on the wall right above it, and then it hit me. I got my coworker and asked her to help me pull at this mirror on the wall. And when we took the mirror down, there was a hole just big enough for the desperate junkie to squeeze through. I asked Brian and Rebecca if I should call the cops again to let them know what I have found, and my boss said, There's still two cops in the parking lot. So I went down to tell them, and the female cop kind of rolled her eyes, but the young guy said, I'll come check it out. They both came back up, looked in the hole, and found a pillow, blankets, cigarettes, clothes, toothbrushes. This woman had been living in the wall behind my mirror for God knows how long. She had access to me and my room at all times. I know it might be hard to picture, but there was a crawl space about two feet wide in between the two rows of rooms. One of the officers called the original officer to come back and take pictures of this. She explained to him what was going on and all I hear over the radio is, no fucking way. He comes back, takes pictures, and is just as mind blown as the rest of us. Obviously, we packed up and left immediately. What's even crazier? She has probably been there a long time. The last time we stayed at this hotel, I would randomly smell cigarette smoke, and I assumed someone was smoking in their bathroom and it was traveling through the vents. A junkie was smoking just on the other side of my mirror. She had access to other rooms too. The holes in the walls were from renovation, and the hotel hadn't patched up the walls and just covered them up with mirrors. She could have been hanging out in people's rooms when they were gone. <laughs> 